Now, at the risk of sounding alarmist, we're facing a cataclysmic environmental crisis, guys. Some would even say that we're on the brink of a complete collapse of industrial civilization as we know it. Think about it. The world is dependent on contaminating fossil fuels, and despite efforts being made to introduce alternative energy, it seems like oil is going to dominate the market until every last drop is gone from the earth. So why aren't more people sounding the alarm? Help answer that question and gain some more insight on the energy problems we face. Earlier I spoke to Mike Rupert. He's a former LA police officer, an investigative journalist, and author of the book Crossing the Rubicon, The Decline of the American Empire at the End of the Age of Peak Oil. I first asked for his predictions if we do not change our current course of energy consumption. Basically, everything that we're looking at right now, uh, major economic dislocations, uh, population die-off is inevitable because there are 10 calories of fossil fuel energy in every calorie of food on the planet. We have 6 billion people on the planet now that weren't here before we discovered oil and natural gas. Uh, and we are also looking at other anthrop anthropogenic changes uh, to the climate. We're looking at climate collapse. All of this essentially follows a model, if you will, and predictions that I made going back to 2003, 2004, and uh, in the documentary Collapse ever since. Uh, we, there is no recovery to anything like well, what we knew as normal uh, for us now. We have to find uh, new normals and adapt to those. In light of the reports coming out of Fukushima revealing now hundreds of thousands of tons of radioactive water has been seeping into the Pacific for the last two years, what do you see as the best case scenario for the end game there? Uh, the only thing that I see that can make a difference at this point is for all seven billion humans who occupy this planet to realize a couple of things. First of all, that everybody's life is in danger from this. Uh, the Pacific Ocean is polluted, the food chain is polluted, and we are looking at a rapidly deteriorating situation at Fukushima, where there are, there are 11 spent fuel pools, uh, two of which are in immediate jeopardy, uh, and where these leaks continued. The only thing that's going to make a difference is if all 7 billion of us drop everything and also shed any preconceived notions about money or how money works or what needs to happen or any ideas of national uh, power or responsibility. This is not a Japanese problem, this is a human problem. And that's the only way we're ever going to be able to approach any kind of a solution for Fukushima. Right, I mean, given, I mean, this disaster aside, this latest one, can nuclear energy ever be harnessed safely, given the fact that its liquid waste can't even be securely stored? Absolutely not. Uh, there is a, an... A former Prime Minister, Naoto Khan, who was Prime Minister when the earthquakes hit Japan, has come out in New York City re just recently and said every nuclear reactor must be shut down now. There are about 450 commercial reactors on the planet. That is an imperative because we cannot maintain all of them and many of them are failing already. Indian Point, just about 26 miles north of New York, has five times more fuel rods than Fukushima. It is a GE Mark I reactor and it has serious structural and maintenance issues right now and that's just one example of many. If, the, if we want to leave anything for our children, for our grandchildren, any life on this planet, the imperative is to safely shut down, put into cold storage, all reactors right now. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think once Fukushima happened, I realized that 23 sister reactors here in the U.S., almost identical design, um, terrifying. Um, there's no initiative to really shut those down, and there should be, Mike. Um, let's talk about fracking, the new craze across the U.S. Reports are coming out now that show that fracking may not only be causing earthquakes, but are potentially unlocking pockets of radiation. Uh, what else can you tell me about this and other dangers that fracking poses? That has been confirmed multiple cases. There's a new story that just appeared today that I haven't been able to read, but it's a third story now confirming that the injection of frac chemicals deep into uh, specific substrata in the soil is releasing stored pockets of radiation that are 300 times above what is an acceptable limit. And that's a fundamental issue about our whole relationship with Mother Earth. She has stored uh, elements that are harmful to life, like carbon, which she is now releasing in massive quantities, and radiation. And, and our pursuit of infinite growth on a finite planet is opening, or has opened, Pandora's box and unleashing all of these uh, plagues, pestilences, and all of these diseases. It has to stop. Fracking is, is, is destroying the fresh water tables and aquifers all over this country, and fresh water is in serious shortage, not only here, but around the world. 
Right, even the term fossil fuel, when you really think about what it is, fossil, fossilized matter compressed over billions of years and we're just blowing it. I mean, it's this magical resource. I cannot believe what we're doing. The short sightedness is astounding. Mike, I know that you've studied a lot about peak resources. Can you explain what that concept means and which ones have already peaked? Well, the first and foremost, and I would, I've been uh, very active in the peak oil movement since 2001 uh, and uh, traveled the world, wrote more than 100 articles on uh, peak oil and peak energy at my former newsletter from the wilderness. And basically, we, 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 have, we are a civilization that has gotten drunk on cheap, abundant energy, which, ha which is disappearing rapidly. Uh, planet Earth passed peak oil in late 2005. That's conventional oil. All these things called oil now, like tar sands, which is bitumen, uh, uh, shale oil, which is uh, kerogen. None of these provide the energy return for energy investment, uh, and they are extremely destructive of the environment. They are not oil, and yet we chase those. That's the same issue with fracking, which provides us a so-called cheap and abundant natural gas, which is absolutely ridiculous when our tap water catches on fire. It causes earthquakes, it sets, sets loose radiation, and it poisons us. Right, I think you said uh, we need to stop this infinite growth in a finite planet. I mean, really, there's a peak to every resource when you're looking at everything on the planet today, Mike, and given the news that I just saw a couple hours ago, unprecedented heat will reach the U.S. in 30 years. Why do you think that U.S. policymakers are more concerned with Obamacare and just this other political squabbling partisanship than the systematic destruction of the globe, especially with the U.S. just becoming number one in oil and gas production? Well, it's not just for that reason. It's that they are incapable. They are sociopaths. They are psychopaths. Uh, and they are completely and utterly disconnected from the fact that we only have one planet on which to live and we all live here together. And if we don't save our ecosystem, our habitat, uh, there's no hope for anything in the future. There's no, it's, it's not just extreme short-sightedness. This, this I would call evil, but I think in a, in a broader philosophical sense, looking back across the whole history of the earth and all of human civilization, this is truly the death of a meme, uh, a, a, a mindset. A, a meme is what what you think about before you think about something. Uh, it's all the stuff that most people accept as being a given before they try to analyze. And that meme is dying and it's breaking free from that meme. It's a war for consciousness uh, of which you are so much a part and, and, and so many of us are. It's, it, it's to break free from that to see and live in a new meme where human energy uh, is not constrained uh, by lies we have been told, I would say now for a good five, six thousand years. Mike, they're seeing the same trends, these obvious trends that you're articulating right now. Where's the alarmism, though, if they're looking at these same things? Well, it depends upon where you measure the alarmism. Uh, if you're looking for it from mainstream media, from CNN, the New York Times, you're not going to find it because they are incapable of sounding the alarm. However, I'm in a very unique position as a result of my longevity, two books, and a very successful movie through Facebook and through my own radio show to be in touch uh, with the fact that all over the world there is a mass awakening occurring right now. Uh, many people are getting this. They are not only just dissatisfied, they are aware of the fact that, that, that there are priorities for ourselves and for our children that we're not addressing. And I think that this awakening is very much underway, and I'm doing everything I can to fan the fires underneath it. I know you are. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, Mike, we have about a minute left, but what can we do to ensure that we're not just passive players watching everything collapse around us? Uh, I have a saying that I uh, use called fire your weapon, and it has nothing to do with guns and firearms. It has to do with whether your expression of dissatisfaction, desire for change, uh, is an email, a letter to your congressman carrying a picket sign, being a blockade in front of a Coca-Cola uh, ramp or a railroad line shipping weapons and, and fire it. We saw amazingly successful results with that in the recent uh, uh, prevention of the United States uh, uh, attack on Syria and regime change. The United States had had said, we, we've determined this is the only way where the, and, and the whole world stood up. Out of 7 billion people on this planet, my guess is 6.9 billion did not want to see that invasion. 
Uh, President Putin in Russia played a, played a very uh, important role in that, but he's a politician and, and the world itself was pushing behind and he knew that the wind was at his back. Uh, and we must not believe that we are helpless victims. We must act as if we make a difference now because the only alternative is to lay down, give up, and die. And, and I'm not like that, and I know you're not, and, and I know all the people who are watching shows like this deeply want to be involved in this shift in consciousness. Life is about the struggle, it's about the fight. Thank you for being such an integral part of that. Mike Rupert, author, investigative journalist, host of the Lifeboat Hour, Lifeboat Hour. thanks so much. Yeah, Abby, it was my pleasure. See you soon.